hello guys welcome to this video so this is what my first video on youtube talking about programming and in this tutorial we're going to be talking about javascript so in this module or in this video i'm basically making a simple project with a guest game website and javascript will be handling everything so this is the running version so it's a common guess game like i guess a game and i tell you if your guess is high, if guess is low, if you guess it correct, you win. If you guess it wrong, you keep on trying to get it right. So, if I put in a number like 12, so I said guess, you see, it tells me your guess number is 12. Guess too low, try again, you see. So, it, it, it box, there is a box for the history, like telling the user where the numbers they have guessed. So, you guess number 12. And that's what I just put in here. And now there's another alert box here which says this is to do try again. So it's keep it dry. So if I say uh, 50, so it says, Congratulations, you won. And you see, it shows all the numbers you have. Yes, you can restart and everything is right out. So that's what we'll be building for this project. I hope you have fun doing it. So I'll keep in the description to get the starting files for the project. Without further ado, let's start right into it. So in this step now we are going to take in some variables so these variables uh, are going to help us to get the user inputs and to be able to start the game at event listeners so the first one is the guest input button where it's going to be a document or get element by id and the id is guest input and for my index.html we can see clearly from there Now the next one is uh, the game button. So we're gonna take the game button, and that is also going to be a document dot get element by ID, and it's going to be the game button. And the next one we're going to take now the restart button. So what the restart button does is it refreshes the whole game so that we can start all over, setting everything back to the default values like zero. So that is going to be a document that get element by ID and that's going to be a restart button. So on the last one, uh, uh, the last one is going to be the history button. So what the history button does, it, it's that box where like we showed in the beginning of the video where it has all the necessary inputs from the user. So it's going to be a document that get element by ID. It's going to be the history box. So that works well. Now, and the last one is going to be uh, an array. So what the purpose of that array is to take in different inputs from the user and store them in a variable so that we can then later on use it in the logic of the application to look through them. All right. So the next step on our list is to uh, get the random number. So we are going to create a function so this function is going to create uh, it, what its role is to get a random number and then returns the value of the random number and stores it inside the variable. So it's going to be a range from 1 to 101 and 101 is going to be exclusive. Means it's like saying 1 to 101 minus 1. So when you take 101 minus 1, you get 100. So then it's going to look from 1 to 100. Now we're going to create a new variable, it's going to be let uh, random number, it's going to be equal to, we use the math.floor method in javascript, so math.floor simply means you round up to the next whole number, and inside the math.floor we're going to use the math.random to get a random integer from 0 to 1, and we're going to multiply it by 101. So when we multiply it by 101, it's going to bring it back to the nearest whole number. And then we're going to return 
the next whole number or the random number so we're going to return random number and I think that will do it now we go above now we're going to create a, a variable so let so we're going to say let now correct random number so the correct random number is the number which will be generated from that function and we're going to store it inside a variable so that the number doesn't keep changing when we try to execute the logic in our application so that does it so you remember when we uh, created the error messages so well, we created the error the error messages like in the beginning of the video yeah, the message are displayed to tell the user if the user has what if the user's guess is high or the user's guess is low so we are going to create three different functions one is going to display the win message the other one is going to display if the guess was too high and the second the third function if the guess was too low so we are creating three functions so that is the purpose of us creating three different functions so that we can display those messages when needed. This one is a function and it's going to be win message. Win message function, it doesn't take any parameters in the brackets and we open and we're going to have const a default message and the message is going to be equal to congratulations you won so that is the message that's going to get displayed whenever the users the user has won the game or guessed right okay so now we're going to add a document dot get event listener or get element by id and now we are going to grab the error messages so this error messages is the div we created in our index.html where it's going to display those error messages. So we're just going to copy it and bring it there. And after, we're going to use a method in JavaScript called .innerHTML. So this is like we're manipulating with the DOM or the document object model where we add uh, text directly into the web into the web page. And the .innerHTML is going to be equal to the box. So next, we're going to create the next function is for the guess too high message. So the name of the function is guess too high message. So if the guess is higher than the, the, the guess of the computer, so we want to display another message. So we're going to say guess is too high, try again. So that's the message, guess is too high, try again. And we are going to add the same thing like we did in the first one. We're going to do a document that get element by ID. So we're going to add a document that get element by ID. This for the error messages, and we're going to do the same thing. Dot inner HTML equals to box. So the inner HTML equals to box is a string. It takes only a string, and that string is that message. So where it is going to be, guess is too high, try again. Now, the last function we're going to create is the guess too low message. So if the, the guess of the user is lower than the guess number from the computer, we want it to is create we want to give the user a message alerting them to say guess is too low try again am i trying to respect every single i made a stupid error there by adding two i was spelling the two wrong so sorry about that so it's supposed to be double o's and if we continue it says try again and then we're going to do a document that get element by id and it's going to be the same thing uh, error messages that in html in html sorry and which is going to be equal to the the, the message we have
Okay, so while recording, I made a dumb error here. So, uh, the const, it was supposed to be a box. It, the variable name was supposed to be the box. Now, what is going to be in the document, the get element by ID error messages that inner HTML was supposed to be the box. You see, you get it? Yeah. So, that what, what was supposed to be there was the box instead. Okay. So next up, we are going to create a, a function that checks if the user's input or the, the guest the user has put into the input box, if it is less than the correct random number, it's greater than the correct random number, or it's equal to the correct random number. So the name of the function is going to be guest checker and it's going to take in a parameter called user's value and we're going to use an if conditional statement. So we say if user's value is less than correct random number, see so that's the variable there, the correct random number. So all we want to do is we're going to write the guest to low message function. So remember our guest to low message function is what is going to return that text that says hey there your guest is too low try again now else if the second condition if the user's value is greater than correct random number you want it to carry out a certain action uh, which is to guess too high message so it's going to display the guess too high message function so Remember, it returns, the guess is too high, try again. And now else, that means if the two conditions are not met, the last one should probably that the wizard has won the game. So, we're going to display the win message. Now, we are going to create a function to create this for the error messages and use the JavaScript switch statement to loop over different error messages. So, what this simply means is we're going to create a function and the function is going to take two parameters. It's going to take the box type parameter and the message. So the box type, we're going to have two box types. It's either a wrong or a win. So those are the different types of box. So we are just going to let box be a, a, a viable and then we're going to use the JavaScript switch statement and it's going to take in the parameter of box type. Now, what the switch syntax does is it tries to test if the condition is met is going to return a certain value and then break for instance if the box type is wrong like we see there so that's case case if it's wrong so we want to create a div so the box is going to create a div now inside that div we're going to have a class equals and we're going to put a class a CSS class in it so sorry for the double semicolons there so we're gonna put the, the regular column sem semicolons and we're gonna put in the alert danger so I kind of use uh, the the bootstrap the, the bootstrap uh, classes class names but the, 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 the coding was actually pure CSS but no bootstrap so for those who are familiar with it you understand now the next case is the win so when you use the win the win so if the box type is win we want to create an alert an alert success so i just made a typo in the first one so it's going to be alert danger and the next one is going to be a div with a class of alert success and after that we want to break so the break statement simply means that it's going to stop checking for the rest of the other conditions now after the switch statement if it has checked for both the wrong and the win cases now we are going to add now the closing div tags so 
and we're going to add the box plus equal to the message so that's like saying the box is equal to the divs the initial divs plus a message after the div and now we're going to put the closing tag behind those divs so and then now we are going to return finally the box so we are returning the box is going to contain both the html it's going to contain the, H, the, the div with the class contain the message and then later on the closing div so moving forward we're going to go back to the win message function and now we are going to call in that message box function we just created below and then we are going to include it with the box message the box type and the message so we're going to create a variable and we'll say let message so it's going to be equal to that function message box function we just created below and remember it takes in two parameters the box type and the message so the box type is win which is a string and the second one is the box which is the message we just created above that's const box equals to congratulations you won so we just copy it and do for the rest of the message functions which is the guest to high message and the guest to low message and we change the guest to low and guest to high messages we change the box type to wrong so if you all noticed i, I made an error with uh, the, the the viable naming we can see the document the get element by id error messages the inner html is taking a box it's supposed to rather take but the message so to solve that issue we had i had to just uh, rearrange those names so we change the let message to instead to let box and we take the const instead to the message and we do that for the rest of the other functions sorry for that error but that's programming for you yeah Okay, so the next step we're going to be focusing on now is to create or to display the messages in the history box. Get it? So we want that anytime the user enters a value, they are going to see a message that tells them that, okay, this is what you have guessed. And it's going to display that you guessed this number, you guessed this number like we showed in the video description at the beginning of this video all right so to do this yeah we're just gonna start by i don't know why this guy is so slow he's typing his dang slow i'm not trying to keep up with him but he's not keeping up and now he's dead all right now you're gonna create a function cool and i create a function i'm going to name it history box and now inside that history box we are going to create a variable and we're going to say let i equals to the guest numbers dot length minus one so what does that net actually mean it simply means that we want to create a variable where it's going to take the guest numbers the array of guest numbers dot length the length of the guest numbers and we subtract by one this is so we get the index position of the last value. Now we say let message. Now the message class, the message uh, variable now is to display the text like you saw, like saying you guessed number 20, you guessed 5, you guessed 4, you guessed 90, you guessed 98. That's the use of the message. Now we are going to use a while loop to look through all the different values that are available there inside the guest numbers list so y i is greater than or equal to zero so definitely i is going to be greater than or equal to zero because 
it already ha it has already uh, uh, many numbers in it get now we're gonna say uh, message plus equal to an li so this is an html tag the list tag and now we're going to put in a class of list group item now the next line we're going to use now a string concatenation we're going to put a plus So we are going to put a plus and we're going to do you guessed and we're going to do another plus again and we're going to say guest numbers plus guest numbers now the plus guest numbers is going to use the index position which is going to be i like we created a variable so it's going to be i and now we're going to close the tag plus open put and then we're going to close the li and then all we are simply going to do is we're going to subtract i so that's going to be i minus minus so like we're decrementing we are not incrementing we are decrementing so it's, instead of i plus plus as we usually know it's going to be i minus and now we're just going to do a message plus equal to we're going to close now the ul tag which is the, uh, the, the, the tag before the li and now we're going to return that message by doing the history button which was one of the variables to define up there as, as the const where the messages will be displayed so we're going to do history button dot inner html the inner html is equal to message and that should do it for the history box function Alright, so I almost forgot something very important. Uh, before we are able to get the array of guest numbers, like to, before we are able to, to use the history box function that we just created, we will need to push all the user's input. Okay, so we need to put all the push all the user's input into a guest number list before it gets used in the history box function you could see the point so this means we are going to create another function where anytime the user clicks the user input it's going to take that user's value and it's going to push it into that guest numbers array so that we can then access that array in the history box function and display the message telling the user what guest they made so it's going to be a function and that is going to be the guest history and it's going to take in a parameter so it's going to be guest history that's the name of the function and it's going to take in a parameter of guest so guest here signifies that the user that's the value of the user and now we're just going to do the guest numbers because we have created the variable above already so we'll just do a guest numbers dot push so dot push method in javascript means it's going to take that value and send it into the list the last the end of the list okay so i'm sure that by now you must be wondering why we haven't run the page so just head over and click on the live server button below like I said, you just click on the live server extension and when you click on the live server, the live server extension, I'm going to leave a link in the description to download it. So the live server, it's an auto enable re reload uh, extension to load HTML. Now, if we try to do anything on the site, nothing works. It's because we haven't added our event listeners. So what we need to do now is to add those event listeners so that the JavaScript will know when to act. It's going to act or it's going to carry out functions only when those buttons are clicked. So right now the site is static. If you click on any of the buttons, it won't work. So we need to add those event listeners. So when we add an event listener to the click for the for the game button and the, uh, for the game button, it's going to run a function.
so the first function the first uh, event listener sorry it's going to be the game button so we're going to do game button dot add event listener and it's going to look for a click event and after look waiting for a click event we're going to run a function called guest game so that function is the main logic we haven't created the function yet but we're going to do that in a bit so we just come below and we create that function so we say function this guy is writing comments too much dude just like go straight to what i'm saying go to the guest game function oh okay he's typing too much we don't need that information uh, okay he's done now let's go function by function i said function cool so function guess game and we are going to open a bracket there i'm going to say let users value is equal to guess input dot value so users value equals to guess input dot value is the variable name guess input is the variable name we created just in line three there line one sorry line two where it says guess input so and dot value is going to take the value that the user has entered now the next statement is we're going to run functions whenever it's going to get clicked so guest checker we're going to put the user's value so we scroll down you see the guest checker function and it takes in the parameter of user's value and the next one is the guest history and the guest history takes in a parameter of user's value as well so if we, we check you we'll look at the guest history and that's it it takes in a parameter of guest so that guest is the user's value and now the last but not the least is gonna run the history box so the history box is the function to display all the messages telling the user the, the guests we have met and that's the last function we have there So at this point in time, we want to run the code and see how it looks like after adding the event listener. So we're just going to check if our live server is running and then we go back to our Chrome browser and we refresh. And now we're going to put in a guess and 21 and hit guess. Oh my God, what's happening? Why is it working? Why is it working? Okay, remember we have the inspect option. So just right click and you scroll down to inspect. Oh, and there the JavaScript console tells us, the Chrome Pro console, sorry. It says the add event listener function is not working properly. So what can be the issue? Maybe we wrote something wrong. And let's look at it. We are looking, we're looking. Something is wrong. Uh, just try to go to the HTML file. Oh yeah, yeah, we see the error there. So we see the IDs we have there are different from the IDs that in the app.js. Here we have guest input, but in the app.js we have something different. I don't know how I met such a stupid error. This guy is so dumb. So we have the guest box instead, which was supposed to be a game button, and the game button was supposed to take the game button instead and the restart button was supposed to take restart button so we have guest input the first one is guest input second one game button so those are silly errors that's a very silly error but that's programming so we are about to make errors all right so if we refresh that everything should be working quite well So right now, before we continue, uh, we need to create a, a restart function. So this restart function is going to, whenever we click the restart function, it's going to 
create a new random correct random number it's going to set the the history box everything is going to clear everything in the history box it's going to clear the user's input it's going to make everything like just open the page so it's going to be a function i'm going to create a restart that's the name of the function so the name of the function is restart and then it's going to take no parameter but inside we're going to create the first variable which is correct random number is equal to get random number so that's the first thing we're going to re reset now the second one is we want to reset the error messages so the error messages like the functions we created for the error messages like guess too high guess is too low and things like that so that's going to be the document dot get element by id and we're going to set the error messages id like we go to our index.html we'll see it clearly there and we're going to set it to an empty string so it's like there's going to be nothing inside and we're going to take our guest numbers the array we want to empty the array so it's going to be a new array so guest numbers is equal to an empty array so guest numbers equals to an empty array so it's going to set back the new array empty so that we can put push in new user input and the last one is we're going to set in the history box we're going to reset the history box so the history box is where it contains all the messages saying you guess 20 you guess 50 and things like that so we're going to say history button that inner html is equal to an empty string or there's going to be nothing there so i think have our restart function working now we have to add the event listener for the restart button so we just get there and say restart like we see our restart button here so we say restart button dot add event listener and it's going to be a click and it's definitely going to be a click and it's going to run the function called restart so sorry for the typo there and dude put the comma put the comma there you're forgetting the comma yeah over there put the comma there all right that's good and i think we're good to go to run the full application so if there's something i've learned never get too excited to run programs my goodness what is that that looks so hideous yeah, but we can fix it. I think we forgot to add something into our JavaScript to solve that issue there. So we see the width of the background image of that uh, error message is extending far beyond. So we just need to go back to our uh, index app.js and we scroll down to where we have the error message class and we add that alert CSS class there. So that's what we are lacking. So we go to the alert. So we just scroll back down and before the div the, the alert danger we want to add the alert class first in it so it's going to be an alert and then you have the alert danger and then you click alert alert success and that's cool everything is good he's even happy about it i don't know why <laughs> all right and boom is working out quite well yeah so the error messages are displaying very well and we can see the guest history everything is showing clearly and so this this guy is so poor at guessing so you just have to bear with me and wait till he gets it correctly because like he's gonna try for a very very long time i just hope he gets it fast and i'm already getting tired Okay, so I think it's, it's, it's almost there. So I think his guess is between our 80. I just rough guess. I think it should be either 82 or 81. I don't know. I just feel like it's either 82 or 81. Like I said, he's so poor at guessing. Yeah, I guess it's too high. So like I said, it's like between 82 and 81. And boom, it says congratulations, you won. And you see, it displays that that 
win message very clearly here for everyone to see yeah but now let me give you a little hint we can just go into our own code if we want to know the random number we can just do a console.log random number and then we return to our page we hit inspect we right click we click on inspect and then we can go to our console and we'll see the random the correct random number but please when you're making the full one for your friends don't don't do that please it's it's gonna make it not fun yeah so as an experiment you can try to add other functions like making a guest tryout and things like that so thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.